How do you say welcome in Irish? Here is your translation. Uh, right, um, okay, yeah, forget that. <laughs> Welcome, peeps, to another IC82 review. As you probably guessed, we're looking at an Irish locomotive today. I was going to be all clever and fancy and greet everybody in Irish, but I... I just, no, just don't go there. Do not, do not go there. I want to travel there one day, so that's why I'm not going to go there, because I'll offend an entire nation. Um, but wow, what, what's going on? Where's, where's the Hornby Red? Or the Backman Blue? What, what is this? This is black, and it says Murphy Models. Scale 176, although that's interesting, because I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. Yes, um, we're, <laughs> we're finally looking at another international locomotive. This model is definitely not British. It's Irish. It's an intercity livery. If I just hold up the end here, you can see it's... Oh gosh, I'm going to get this wrong as well now. Is it Erod? Erin? Erin? Erod Erin? Um, basically Irish Railways. Uh, diesel locomotive, class 201, number 222. And it's intercity livery, and this is River Darble. So yeah, I, I'm looking at this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I get a lot of people asking me to do more international locomotives, which is hard though, guys, because you're basically asking me to buy, with my own cash, a train which I don't really want to run, or don't want to keep. So it's kind of hard, okay? I'll do the best I can. It'll get easier when I can sell them on using the websites and stuff. I can do more and more then. But um, this did look quite cool, so I was happy to go for this one. Um, I don't know if I'll keep it, but we'll see. Uh, and the second reason is, about a month ago, um, Ireland celebrated legalising uh, same-sex marriage across the whole country, which is really, really cool, okay? because I, I just hate any bigoted nonsense of, oh, that person shouldn't be allowed to love that person. You know, who do you think you are? It's, it's just ridiculous. Just let people be, okay? <laughs> let, let people be, just, you know, love and let be. I mean, you know, wh wh where's the harm? I, d I, I don't get it. So, well done, Ireland. Really, really cool. Dead proud of you. Uh, really, really can't wait to go and check out your awesome trains. I mean, just look at this bad boy. Wow, I have never seen anything like it. And look, this is really cool, isn't it? They've, they've, they've marked up a little um, illustration of what the train looks like on the side. It's not a very big one, but hey, what a cool train set that would make. Well, they should make a train set. Um, okay, yes, it's a class 201. I can tell you a little bit of information about it before we open the box, because there's not very much on the box, is there? Um, not suitable for children under 14 years. Right. Okay, is that it? Um, uh, de uh, company details. Uh, some photos. There we go. I think that's, yes, that's what we've, that's what we've got today. One of those. How cool is that? Intercity. <laughs> we just need to get a big black pen and write 82 on the side, like that. Um, what else can I tell you then? Okay, they're diesel electric unit. You know what we are. You know what that means. Basically, you burn diesel, you burn fossil fuels. So, burn lots of million-year-old sea animals to create electricity, which is used to power a motor there and there and there and there and there and there. And that's how it moves. It's as simple as that. General Motors is the manufacturer. Um, but this is what's so fascinating. Look, it says scale 176, but they are not the same gauge as standard gauge. They're not standard gauge in real life. They are five foot three inches instead of the four foot eight and a half inches, I think it is, or something. So they're a bit bigger. They're a bit wider than, than British um, locomotives and American locomotives and French and German and... Australian, no, actually I'm not too sure what the gauge is in Australia. I think they're the same as us, I'm not too sure. So yeah, a bit similar to Russia, um, they're, they're, they're a bit wider. But, so that's, I thought that was interesting. Um, it's a V12 turbocharged diesel 
12 cylinder engine inside. Uh, top speed just over 100 miles per hour. 3,200 horsepower is the output of the engine, which is pretty hefty. But only 32 of them are built, with uh, a couple going to Northern Ireland, I think. And they were manufactured between 1994 and 1995, so they're getting on now. They're getting quite old, which is um, interesting. And what's really sad is that a lot of them have been replaced already. The, um, they're bringing in, is it the class 22,000 or 2,200 or something? It's basically like a, a I think it's a DMU. Um, and those are slowly but surely replacing these intercity local hold services all over Ireland. I think there are still a few left if you want to go and check them out, and I know I do. I think there are still a few services in Ireland that use this locomotive, but its days are probably, you know, those services' days are probably numbered. So be quick. Um, what's really cool, and I have got to tell you this before I open the box, is that uh, Ireland was so keen to test one of these and to get drivers trained up on it and stuff that they flew one in using an Antonov AN124 heavy haul aircraft. How cool is that? I mean, it's like an episode of Thunderbirds or something. <laughs> Apart from people, no, you know, I don't think anyone died. I don't think anything went wrong. So yeah, two of my favorite worlds collide, aviation and trains. So let's open this box and see what you get. Well, it is a beautiful box. Honestly, it's really nice. I love the full colour photos. I love the quality of it. It's really, really good. Um, I do think this is the retooling because I must point out that in the early 2000s, uh, Murphy Models commissioned Lima to make them some locomotives. And then years later, they said, hey, we're going to make some ourselves. I think this is that second batch, I think. I think this is their own version, but you can tell. I mean, there's still hints of Lima. You'll see. Um, there's a little care sheet inside. It's really small. You've got some information on the locomotive here. It's quite concise, but it's basically what I've just told you. So it talks about when they were introduced. It talks about the weight and the length of the units. Um, what I did find interesting it says they are fitted for multiple operation within the class 201, so basically like for like is not a problem, but this is not permitted on the Irish network. Is that true? That can't be true. Why is that true? <laughs> Please do comment below and tell me why are they not allowed to couple up in multiple units? That's really bizarre. Um, and then it talks about the routes, so here you go, so Dublin to Cork, Dublin to Galway, Dublin to... Waterford, um, Westport, Limerick, I mean, these are all fantastic Irish places, they really are. Uh, replacing the older 071 class. Now, if you look that up, it's not actually too dissimilar. It does look, it does look slightly similar, but apparently that's, that's really old. Um, it does talk about them having a checkered history, a checkered past. Apparently, they, they suffered um, a few technical problems, such as fire, um, engine fires and the bogies cracking and having to have work done to them. So yeah, a little bit mixed. Uh, and then it talks about the uh, liveries and the nameplates and stuff. So that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. And then on the other side, now this is really interesting. Uh, it talks about mounting um, the optional parts, which is okay, that's fine. But then look at this, the mounting of decoder and ESU sound decoder. Look at that. You have to grab a knife open the roof panel and then that reveals the socket where you can fit the decoder and then obviously you replace the roof panel again so different honestly so bizarre right so what we do then is we take off this this outer layer and we look at this little bag of accessories now this is really strange as well look they've given you a sort of screwdriver <laughs> you've actually got like a little screwdriver inside there well, I, I assume it's a screwdriver, I don't know. It might be used as a tool to just flip off the roof or to get into the body, I, I don't know. And then there's some detailing here. You've got uh, multiple unit wires, uh, possibly. You've got um, air, brake, air brakes and, uh, yeah, the grab rails, the little 
uh, grab rails that you can fit onto the bottom. I'm not too sure what these are. I thought they were air dams at first, but I don't think they are. I really don't know. And unfortunately, the instructions don't say either. Hmm. No. Really, really bizarre. So, yeah, kind of a kind of a, it's a bit of a shame that is. Um, and then, of course, you've got the locomotive itself, and it's it's really quite nice. It's basically wrapped up in this like sheet of cellophane, so you just sort of carefully lift it. Oh, here we go. You carefully lift it out of its packaging, and whoa, there you go. That's it. I don't think, I don't think there's anything else. I think that's I think the rest of that is just packaging. Yep. Um. And so yeah, there we go. That's there's the model. Look at this. <laughs> I have never seen anything like this on the IC82 channel before. Wow. Well, <laughs> the first thing you notice is the weight. It's incredibly heavy. Um, there's obviously a really good motor mechanism inside inside here, which is really uh, reassuring. So I'm, I'm quite looking forward to that. Um, it says Murphy models on the bottom there. The underframe detail is there, but it's, well, it's sort of detailed and intricate, but really basic at the same time. What I mean is that they have, look, they've included a little bit of colour there, which is really quite bizarre. Um, the detail is very intricate. Look at this. I mean, just look at all that bogey detail. Look at the cabling, look at the hydraulics. It's, it's really quite impressive, but at the same time, Look how it's just, oh, sorry, that's, <laughs> that's messenger going on my phone. Um, but at the same time, look how basic it is. Do you see what I mean? There's like, there's no realistic colouring or weathering to it at all. I mean, even black would probably be a little bit more realistic. I don't know. I've not seen them in real life. Um, but if we have a look at the photo of one. I mean, just look at those bogies there and then compare them to the bogies here. Now, I don't know about you, but it, I think it's a throwback to the days of Lima, possibly, because these bogies, and in fact, this colour of plastic looks very Lima-like to me. It really does. So maybe it's something to do with that. Maybe I have got the old tooling, I don't know. I don't think I have, but maybe I have. Maybe you would know more about that. Um, something else that I also want to point out really quickly is that the bogies, um, you see you've got a lovely NEM coupling here, which is fantastic. And again, just like with many Backman and Hornby models, it's got this really fancy spring-loaded, twisty-turny thing, so that you can, so that basically nothing derails as you go around the track. But, as the bogey rotates, it catches that coupling, which I think is a bit of a shame, and could be a problem. And it's the same at the other end, look. So I thought that was worth pointing out. Also, the buffers, I mean, look how drunk they are. <laughs> They're just all over the place. Look, I told you, you're on camera, so behave. But they just, they just, they just spin around like crazy. It's, I'm going to see if I can do something about that and stop them from doing that, because that's just so annoying. They are spring-loaded, though, ever so slightly, which is good. But yeah, they're just... <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. But they just twist and twist loads. Um, so yeah, I'll see if I can do something about that. But yeah, you have got a nice slimline uh, tension lock coupler there in a NEM socket, so that's really good. I hope those lights are going to light up. I really don't know. I couldn't tell you. But mm, I, think a, an e, I think a golden eagle's just flown in over. But the detail on the rest of the model is out of this world. Just look at this. Look at these handrails here, or grab rails, or whatever you call them. They are amazing. And then look at those wipers. I have not seen wipers that good on a Backman or Hornby model. That's just brilliant. There's even an open window here, and you can see... Oh, sorry, no, it's not open. No, it's not open. It does flex a little, hmm, but it's not open. But there's even some very, very basic cab detail inside. Look at that. Just incredible. Um, I can't really comment too much on the livery and how realistic the livery is because I've never seen it in real life, so I don't know how accurate that is. But I can tell you that, look, the similarities between this and the rest of General Motors is striking. Because 
even this exhaust manifold is basically identical to the one on a class 67 or a class 66 so you can tell that it's definitely part of that family um, I, I did notice earlier that I think it was yeah a, a, some of the detail seems a li little bit loose like it's not been very well attached so the build quality is sort of average but it's alright it gets away with it because the rest of the model is just so detailed. I mean you've even got different colours on the roof. This grille here is particularly lovely and you can see right through the locomotive as well. Very very impressive. I do like the livery. It's so different. It looks, it really does look foreign. It looks like something from um, another country. You know, the way you've got this twin stripe running across the top of the locomotive in a sort of yellow and green. Well, it's sort of like a cream colour and green. Green is very, very Irish, isn't it? Very Irish, so I'm quite pleased with that. And then how they have to have the yellow ends as well, just like we do, because of the regulations that state, you know, the end of the locomotive has to be as high, visi high, as high visibility as possible so that people can see it coming. Um, so, plus points then. Absolutely brimming with detail even if some of that detail could do with some work, I think it would be amazing to paint this and to weather it. Absolutely incredible. If you'd like to see me do something like that, let me know. Um, it's really, really heavy. And, it, it, yeah, it just looks stunning. And things like the NEM sockets and the sprung buffers add a real touch of class. However, uh, the cons are that sometimes the build quality feels a little bit temperamental. Um, this really unrealistic grey plastic that's everywhere lets it down ever so slightly. The spinny buffers really wind me up something rotten. <laughs> um, but, but, but that's about it. That really is it. I think we've just got to put it on the track and see how well she runs. Okay, well thank you for joining me over at the test loop. Um, we're still we're still working on the permanent way. <laughs> Engineering works are still taking place on the outer loop. And so once again we're using the inner loop today. But it's fine, it's third radius. So it's going to be really gentle on the locomotive, and we should be able to give it a good test. It sits on the track really nicely. I just get wound up by those buffers spinning all over the place. Um, wow. <laughs> Gosh, I've never seen anything like it on the layout. It's just, it's amazing. And, you know, Ireland's only several hundred miles away, if that. But it's just so radical, so different. Okay, we've got the fantastic Gage Master Combi controller plugged in today. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of juice. Oh, that's nice. I didn't see any rear lights, I didn't see any tail lights, but there's definitely lights as it comes towards you. Look at those two tiny ones underneath the uh, locomotive number of 222. Wow, what a beast! Gosh, she rolls like thunder. Um, I'm sure there's probably a song in there somewhere. And look at the slow speed performance. Slower, slower. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> 10 out of 10 for performance and she's not even gone anywhere. Right, okay, let's get it going around the leap then. Very, very impressive. What a beautifully reassuring rumble to her. I mean, there's so much weight to this model, and there's so much power in that motor mechanism. It's quality. I mean, the underframe detail might not be the best I've ever seen, but the motor 
is stunning. Okay, so let's slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at that. As smooth as a baby's bomb. Honestly, incredible. The motor mechanism inside this model is second to none, folks. It's easily as good as anything by Halgen or Backman or Hornby. Um, I am a little bit disappointed by some of the grey plastics. I think they could be improved. I'm going to try and do that, especially if you really want to see it. I really will. Um, I'm impressed that there are lights, and actually there are tail lights. Once you've got it up to plenty of power, they do they do just about come on. I think I can try and get it. I think I can show you now. There you go. See those? They're just there, aren't they? They're the inner clusters. And the white lights are not just the center clusters, but the outermost lights as well. So, yes, very impressive. It's a very... it must be the retool. It, it's got to be the retool. Um, it's just so, it's just so incredible to have such a model like this in the collection. Do I recommend it? Well, yeah, definitely. It's worth building an Irish-based layout just for this locomotive alone. It is that smart and that incredible. I wonder if you can get the coaches for it.